Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's ClickFunnels 2.0 tutorial, we are going to look into the new checkout element, how to use it on your order form page and how to create one-click upsell or downsell with it. Smart checkout element, which is called simply checkout in the page editor, was created to replace an existing checkout element, which is now called checkout legacy and should have better payment processing capabilities. So in this video, we are going to use this new element checkout, make sure you select this element and not the checkout legacy element. Two things before we get to that, first click that subscribe button that you see below this video and enable notifications to not miss out on our future content. And second, if you don't have your ClickFunnels 2.0 account yet, you can find the link in the description of this video. And if you're already using ClickFunnels 2.0, you can find an offer that will help you to save on your subscription. And in both cases, you will also get our ClickFunnels 2.0 course as a bonus. All right, first things first. In order for the Smart Checkout to work correctly, you need to set the following features before starting working on the checkout element. First, you need to connect Payments AI integration. Second, you need to create products that you want to use on this funnel. And third, you need to configure the shipping feature. You can find tutorials on how to do that in the card up here. All right, now let's look into the checkout element. As mentioned before, when you want to add a new checkout, you will need to go to the order and then select the checkout. That's the element that I already have here on the page. Then we go to the settings of the checkout element by clicking on this gear icon. If you click on this templates tab, you will see all the templates for the checkout element that ClickFunnels has available. If you don't want to deal with the look and the style of the checkout element, you can just select one of the templates from here. If you want to reset the template, you would need to click this button and it will bring you to the default template. If you use the old checkout element, you may know that the reset button would remove this style, remove any template and give you more customization options for the checkout, but that's not the case with the new element. Here you can either select any of the templates or reset it to the default view like that. I will quickly select the template that I was using. Two of the tabs here, logic and advanced that we have here, we probably will not use unless you want to add some animation, but the main tab that we're interested in is settings. As with a lot of elements in the page editor, you can increase or decrease the top margin for this element. And the next setting is to select the number of steps that you want for your checkout form. That's how you create either a one-step order form, where all the information that we are requesting from the customer is mentioned on one page, or a two-step order form, where we have information divided between two pages, or even three steps. You can use this drop-down to preview your checkout element in different states, like for example to preview step 1 or 2 in a guest mode, that's when we don't have any information about the customer on file, in the saved mode, when we already have information about the customer, upgrade or downgrade mode, or one-time offer mode. This way you don't have to always preview the page, you can just preview the checkout element separately to see how it looks. The next setting that we have for the checkout element is general styles. Here you can adjust the view of your checkout form. You can see that you can adjust the view of containers and also input fields. And as the note mentions here, input styles affect the style of forms, product select, payment methods and checkboxes. For example, if we increase the font size of the input headlines, you can see that the text shipping information is now bigger. So you can make those minor adjustments to the look of the template that you have already selected. And also on top of that, you can add the CTA headline. If you want to write some text that will encourage the customers to buy your product, you can do it in the field here. Now we go back to the settings of the checkout element by clicking on this back arrow button. And we will go over the settings of the checkout form elements here. First we have the settings for different checkout steps. Right now we're using a two-step order form and here you can adjust the settings for these steps. For example, change the direction. In this case, step one and two will be vertical like this and not horizontal. Change the style of the step, for example, with an arrow below that appears here. In this section, you can adjust the text of the step headlines that we have here, shipping and payment. 
and also change the text sizes if you need. Next, you can change the colors. Keep in mind that steps have different states, like active step, the one that is selected right now, and inactive state. And if you want to adjust the colors, you want to make sure that you do it for both states. And last but not least, you can change the text of the privacy note here. The text will be depicted under the button. Let's go back to the settings of the checkout element. Next, we have contact form. That's the information that we have here, the personal information and the shipping information. There are not a lot of settings here. If you want to adjust the styles, you can do it in the general styles. And if you don't want to have the shipping information headline, you can remove it here. If you're selling a digital product on your funnel, then ClickFunnels will automatically remove the shipping information block and we will not request it because we actually don't need it. However, right now it's not possible to make the field phone number and last name as not required or remove them from the checkout form. Next, we have the product select section. If you need to attach the products for this final step, you can do it directly from here by clicking edit products. I already have two products attached, the main product and the product for an order bump. If you don't know yet how to create products and how to attach them to the funnel step, you can watch a tutorial by clicking on the card up here. If you want to remove the headline for the product select, you should toggle it off. And same goes for the product select section. You either turn it off to remove it completely or you can select different styles for it. In the advanced settings, you can adjust the style of the text that we have in the select product section. For example, increase the size for the headline. Next, we have the shipping options section, which also doesn't have a lot of settings. You can either remove this section completely or just remove the headline. If you want to set different shipping options, you can do it in the shipping section in the settings of your workspace. The payment method is also configured in the settings of your workspace. And here you can only slightly adjust the look of this section on your checkout element. Next, we have the order bumps area. That's the section that you can see here. As with the main product, you can first of all configure the products for the order bump here. You can just drag and drop the product in this area, in the order bump area. You can switch between the styles for the order bump or customize the look by using the settings here. And last but not least, we have the settings for the button. Make sure that you enter the text for different states of the button. If you want the visitors of your page to go to a different page to a different website when they click on the button, instead of going to the next step of the funnel, you can use this Submit Redirect Override feature. You will need to tick off this checkbox and then paste the URL where you want your customers to go. At the bottom you can adjust the style of the button. And the button, unlike other elements, have much more ways to customize the look of it. And other important elements that we have here Terms and conditions checkbox if you want to use it. And you can enter the text that you need in the field here. And if we are using this checkout element on the upsell or downsell pages, we also will need the link. If a customer wants to buy our upsell or downsell offer, they would need to click a button. And if they don't want to get it, they will just click on the link that we have here. And the link will lead them to the next step or to any other URL that you define here. Now let's say that this is our order form and we also want to create an upsell or downsell step in our funnel. For that, I will use a different funnel step, add the new checkout element there and also adjust the settings for it to work as an upsell or downsell checkout. Save the changes here. Add new element, go to the order, select checkout, go to the settings of the checkout. I will go with the same template. We can select the preview as an OTO page, one-time offer, or in other words, an upsell or downsell. And what we need to add here is the no thank you link. For that, we go to the settings of the button, toggle it on. I can adjust the text here. And let's say if they click on the no link, I want them to go to a different website. For that, I will just paste the link to the website here and click Save Changes.
All right, now let's test these two pages, our order form with the smart checkout element and our upsell page also with the new checkout element and see how they work together and if all the information is stored and the checkout experience is flawless. I will quickly enter my contact information and then we can proceed to the next step. On the second page of the order form, I need to enter the payment information. And because my funnel is in the test mode, I can just use this test credit card number. Date will be any date in the future. And the verification code is just three random numbers. Let's also select the Autobahn product. And the summary of the checkout form is also correct. We have the main product added and the order bump product added with a total of $434. Click Submit. Now we see our upsell page with the product that was set for that page and also our button and the No link. You remember, if I select the No link, we should go to the CF Power Script site. And if I want to add a product, I would select the quantity and then the button becomes active. Let's check if the link is working properly. That's right. Our setup is working properly and that's how easy you can use the new checkout, the smart checkout element in ClickFunnels 2.0 on your order form and also on your upsell or downsell pages. While the new checkout element is simpler and also has more processing capabilities, I think there are a few disadvantages at the moment. There are not a lot of customization options, as you saw in the settings of different elements. It's not quite clear where I should edit specific elements. You may remember that in the old checkout element, if you click on the area here, for example, shipping information, it would open the settings for this specific area for you. In the new checkout element, you need to know where you'd go to edit this section. And as I have already mentioned before, it's not possible at the moment to get rid of the phone number and last name fields to make them not required. And same goes for the billing information section. Other than that, the new checkout element is more intuitive and much simpler to use. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to not miss out on the future content and I will see you in the future videos. Bye bye!